So it's Tuesday evening, September 3rd, 1991, and our subject is crop circles. Well, I think it's interesting to talk about crop circles, um, and it's uh, particularly interesting um, for those of us in Britain, partly because this is almost the only phenomenon in which Britain currently leads the world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, my own involvement um, in this, apart from the general interest, uh, an interest shared by practically everybody in Britain, a subject is discussed by almost every man, woman and child in the British Isles. Um, is that I'm a member of the Centre for Crop Circle Studies and on the scientific panel, um, both because of my interest in morphic resonance and also because um, I'm one of the few crop physiologists um, around. And since uh, this is a crop phenomenon, crop physiology is one of the relevant disciplines. The phenomenon of crop circles first came to public attention in 1980 or 1981 when people started noticing circular areas of fields uh, which were depressed, usually with a spiral pattern of flattening of the corn. And to start with, um, these were simply circles. And so the name grew up, they were called crop circles. Um, there were a few seen in 1981, and at first they attracted the attention of the UFO people and the Earth Mysteries people, particularly the UFO uh, experts, because they started occurring in the neighbourhood of Warminster in Wiltshire, which is an area famed for UFO sightings. Um, in fact, in those parts of South West England, with um, long histories of UFO interest. Then, um, in subsequent years, um, as interest grew, uh, more and more of them were observed. Um, by the mid-80s, they'd become a fairly well-known phenomenon. They were reported in the media and caused quite a lot of comment. And the main way that they were explained at the time uh, was in terms of whirlwinds. Um, the chief proponent of the whirlwind theory is um, an indefatigable fellow called Medium, who believes that uh, they're caused by uh, plasma vortices, a new kind of previously unobserved whirlwind, which unlike ordinary whirlwinds, which move across fields like dust devils and would therefore leave a trap, uh, came into being at a single localised focused point and by spinning around created the sharply defined depression of the crop. By the mid-80s, uh, the phenomenon had developed so that um, instead of just single circles, circles appeared now with smaller circles around them, sometimes four circles spaced uh, at equal intervals around the central circle, uh, sometimes uh, with rims around them, so there'd be the circle, then there'd be a gap of standing corn, and then there'd be a ring around the original circle. Meaden had to elaborate his plasma vortex theory now to account for vortices which could jump and uh, create uh, symmetrical patterns of vortices around the original circles. And as he elaborated his theory, so the phenomenon became more elaborate. He was one of the principal investigators at the time, and he's the editor of the Journal of Meteorology and the president of the Tornado and Storm Research Organization. Uh, which is to do with curious weather phenomena. Um, by 1988, uh, phenomena had started appearing where you got rows of circles. By 1989, these had become more elaborate. And by 1990, um, the phenomena had become so extraordinarily elaborate um, that these aroused extremely widespread attention and media interest. The, there were ones where there were a series of rings joined together by lines with symmetrically placed boxes on the side and sometimes with cone-like structures coming off. Well, this was clearly uh, a challenge for the uh, plasma vortex theory 
and Medium, ever ingenious, elaborated it further so that these plasma vortices could now create things that look more like Sumerian hieroglyphs than anything else. Um, so his theory uh, was elaborated ad hoc until this year. He had to resort um, to an additional hypothesis, namely that these plasma vortices were organized by chaotic attractors. Um, well, for some reason, because Meaden claimed to have the principal scientific explanation for these, um, at first people thought, well, they were curious phenomena, an anomalous scientific phenomenon. Um, as the phenomenon has become more and more elaborate, uh, his attempts to explain the phenomena in terms of seemingly normal natural forces have become less and less credible to many. In June 1990, there was a conference organized by him and his group in Oxford, in England, um, the culmination of which was supposed to be a general endorsement of the fact the phenomenon had now been solved uh, in terms of the plasma vortex. However, just at the end of the conference, uh, one of the investigators came in with a set of slides of the crop circles that had appeared within a few preceding weeks, which included these large Sumerian hieroglyph forms with a series of rings, symmetrical boxes, and so on. And the conference dissolved in disarray as everybody but Meaden uh, realized that uh, these extremely complex uh, and symmetrical structures couldn't conceivably be explained by the type of whirlwind theory he was putting forward. Um, because the whirlwind theory was so um, widely accepted as being the most rational scientific explanation for this, um, the hoax theory, which is one of the main alternatives, um, was not considered that seriously initially. Um, as the phenomena got more elaborate, um, the phenomena has become more and more puzzling and more and more people have been driven to consider the hoax theory. There have been some definite hoaxes. Um, one was commissioned by one of the popular daily newspapers in Britain. Um, partly to outwit one of the rival newspapers who'd been giving a lot of coverage to corn circles. Um, they were then able to uh, show evidence of a hoax which was carried out by people commissioned by themselves to produce a spurious phenomenon. One appeared two years ago um, which was a fairly crudely executed um, hoax um, and to make the point that it was a hoax Ouija boards were found in the middle of the circles when the hoax was discovered. So that one was clearly announcing itself as a hoax. Well, there are several features about these which perhaps I should mention by way of introduction. Um, firstly, they don't um, occur just in single types of crops. They mainly occur in cereal crops, usually wheat and barley. Um, and uh, other cereal crops, but they also have been found in oilseed rape and other crops, so they're not confined to cereals, but they're mainly in cereal crops. And from just a footnote for the benefit of Americans, uh, what we in England call corn means all cereal crops, so when people talk about corn circles, they don't mean circles of maize in maize fields. Maize is hardly grown in England, and as far as I know, these have never been observed in maize crops. Um, the crop is flattened. The stems are not broken. They're bent over, usually at the base. There's two kinds of flattening. One is where the stem is bent, and the other, which happens in wet ground, is where the roots become loose and the whole plant goes over because the roots have provided very little resistance. Both these types of flattening occur naturally as a result of wind damage to crops, and in the trade they're called lodging, where a crop falls over. Um, when a crop falls over, if it's still at the green and growing stage, then um, the growing ends of the thing will right themselves and start growing up again. This is a normal physiological response found in any flattened grass. Um, and so if the lodging occurs at an early stage in, in the growth of the crop, then you get them regenerating, recovering and growing up. There's nothing mysterious about this. It's what happens to any crop, whether lodged by wind, or pressed over mechanically, or in a crop circle. 
the, these um, crop circles have mostly been found in southwestern England and a remarkably high concentration is found around UFO centres like Warminster. There's a particular hill near Warminster which is a centre of UFO sightings and they've been found round there. They've been found near to Stonehenge, near to Avebury, Silbury Hill and East and, Long Kennet, East and West Long East and West Kennet Long Barrows, a, a whole complex of uh, megalithic remains in Wiltshire. Um, and they've been found near Winchester and other places where there are ancient centres. So there's a curious association of these with some of the prime complexes in England of megalithic remains and megalithic sites. They're often within a few miles of them. And some of the best ones have been site you can actually stand on Silbury Hill and see them. There's, uh, this year there were something like eight or nine within two miles of Avebury in that particular complex. The patterns, as I've already mentioned, have been rapidly evolving from simple circles. Uh, they've moved on to complexes of circles, um, then to these lines of circles joined uh, with boxes around and sometimes with uh, semicircles at the end. Um, this year the elaboration continued further. Ones, were appeared, ones appeared with ladder type patterns in them. And perhaps the most remarkable of all occurred in July 1991, uh, involving a circle in the middle, a ring around it, a triangle over that, and at the apices of the triangle, further circles containing different spiral patterns in each. This last one um, is remarkably like the centre of the crop circle studies logo, which consists of a circle with a triangle and rings at the end. And the ones with ladders which appeared this year are very like pictures of um, Neolithic rock markings which were published in an article earlier in the year uh, comparing crop circles to archaic artefacts in Europe, um, drawing attention to the fact that that some of them are like ring, ball and ring uh, markings. And there were some of the pictures in this book which showed ladder formations, very similar to the ones that subsequently appeared. Well, there have also been sightings of crop circles in other parts of England, and they've been a few have been reported from parts of the US, Australia, Crimea, and elsewhere. The evolution of the phenomenon is also its spread is very remarkable. In 1990 there were over 400 circles or formations in fields, whereas the total recorded number up to 1990 from 18, 1980 onwards only came to about 400. So the number of these is increasing quite rapidly. This year the season started late, 1991, partly because we had a wet spring, apparently they're deterred by rainy weather. Um, the peak time for the occurrence of these is in May, June and July, when the crops are still growing. Some occur in August, but in August the crops are maturing, becoming you know, drying up, and they're harvested typically in August. So there's a limited season when the phenomenon appears. You can't get them between August and May because there are no standing crops, or in the earlier part of the spring they're very, they've hardly grown at all. So, um, um, attempts have been made to observe them forming. People have um, set up structures, observed fields with field glasses, infrared recording apparatus, and so forth. There have been various accounts of mysterious blue lights, buzzing noises, humming noises, some of which have been recorded on tape recorders, and other peculiar phenomena. Dowsers, occultists, parapsychological researchers, uh, UFO, uh, ufologists, and um, all kinds of people um, interested in paranormal phenomena, fortunes and so on, have been drawn to these phenomena in droves. Um, and 
attempts to explain them in terms of occult forces, dowsing lines, ley lines, and so on, uh, are so numerous that it would take many hours to go through them all. The remarkable thing, though, is that almost every hypothesis that's been put forward to explain them um, is either refuted by the fret facts or even more uh, mind-boggling than the phenomenon itself. The variety of theories include migrating hedgehogs removing in circles, mysterious fungus and viral diseases occurring in patterns in the fields, um, of course the plasma vortex theory, um, and then a whole range of other theories which fall into two main categories. The top-down theory that has the patterning influence coming from above, like in the wind, the air, um, or by some uh, force coming down from above, or the bottom-up theory that has the patterns emerging through the earth and somehow weakening the crop so that it falls over, possibly by the agency of wind, but a kind of weakening force moving up from the earth. So you could call these the, the Gaian theory, moving up from the earth, or the um, celestial theory, forces moving down from above. Um, it's perfectly clear now to everybody involved in the field that these involve some kind of designing intelligence. They're obviously not merely random patterns caused by chance natural phenomena. The fact that the complexity of the phenomena has increased so much in the few years that they've been observed can't be explained simply in terms of more people looking out for them, therefore patterns being seen which were not seen before. These are huge structures. It's impossible that... Um, especially in the last 10 years, structures of the complexity observed in the last two or three years could have occurred in that part of England and not been observed. Um, uh, of course, people involved in trying to explain them naturalistically have to try and say they've always happened, it's just that no one observed them before. It's only the press attention that's led to them being observed. And so when we come to the um, present state of play, it's clear to everyone that there's some kind of intelligence involved, some kind of patterning or formative influence. Um, the two main categories of explanation that have been put forward involve, first, the hoax theory, that the whole thing is an incredibly elaborate hoax, uh, involving uh, a, a great deal of precision, planning, uh, commando-like skills, uh, masterminded by people of extraordinary imagination and intelligence. Um, and so far, uh, with complete secrecy on the part of all those involved. Um, or that we're dealing here with a phenomenon so remarkable that it goes off the end of the scale of any previously known uh, poltergeist, fortian, or other such paranormal phenomenon. Because of its uh, evolving nature, the intelligence behind it and the fact that it has a kind of sense of humour and interacts with what we think about them. Whatever theory is put forward, the phenomenon seems to refute within the next year. One of the very few uh, generalisations you can make is that they never cross field boundaries. They've never yet been observed to straddle a hedge, for example, between two fields. Um, but almost because that generalisation has been made, there are some people in the Centre for Crop Circle Studies who expect that that will in fact happen next year. So, in summary, I think what they present is a kind of koan, a kind of puzzle, which evolves year by year, which is a definite phenomenon that's unmistakable, can be photographed and is photographed, reported in the national press and the local media, on television, uh, discussed throughout Britain and increasingly in other parts of the world. But for which the mind can find no single satisfying explanation because any attempt to come up with such an explanation uh, seems to be refuted by the facts or can be uh, countered by some alternative explanation. So they pre present a, a real enigma or riddle which in my opinion is, is yet completely unsolved. Well, I think to take the most uh, sympathetic view to your presentation, most radical hypothesis behind the enigma, something like uh, 
intelligent species on the 12th planet, the a ray gun or a powerful force or whatever you please, the intelligent, um, an external intelligence really trying seriously to communicate with us. Let's say I like this, I am ready to go. Then before, even so, we could interpret the phenomenon. We would be um, required by every consideration to completely eliminate the hoax theory. So, even the UFO theorists, I think, would agree, before you could start uh, listing some more or less credible explanations, uh, you would have to dispose of the hoax theory or give your argument why it's extremely improbable or something like that. This would just, uh, and in service, in proper service to the traditional cognitive style of this planet and trying to give the best service to the intelligence of the other planet. And yet, it seems in your discussion and in the discussions I've read in the journals and books, there is no argument is, is given to rule out or diminish the likelihood of, of, of the hoax theory. So th this is the, the point, first of all, that I'm not understanding. I need to dispose somehow of what seems to me the likeliest explanation in order to give any serious consideration to alternative explanations. All right, so, so, so what, what, let us what consider is? the hoax theory, since Terence is such a, a, an expert at uh, elaborate conspiracy theories. Um, perhaps this would fall to him to provide an explanation. I think the main reason why um, people who are involved in investigating it don't think they're all hoaxes. Um, and almost everyone who I know who's actually investigated and been there, including farmers in whose fields they appear, the policemen in the aerial patrol whom we met when we visited one in Rocha, um, the um, the people who've seen them on the ground and who've seen most of them. There's hardly anyone who's actually acquainted with the phenomena at first hand who thinks they're all hoaxes. The people who think they're all hoaxes are people who've never seen them, who sit in armchairs and can, the armchair skeptics. Uh, are but, but why? What, what is it that has made you personally to think that um, a hoax is unlikely, unlikely explanation? Well, first of all, um, the fact that um, the hoaxes haven't been detected, if so. Secondly, um, that when looking at the phenomena, it's very hard to conceive how the whole thing could have been executed. Thirdly, and probably the most important objection, that for such a hoax to have been perpetuated, perpetrated over a ten-year period, would require an extreme elaborateness of organisation, uh, dedication on the point of on the part of quite a large number of people, military precision in planning and execution, ability to do these things under the nose of teams of investigators who spend all night trying to find out how they're done. They often occur within a few hundred yards of investigators trying to track the phenomenon and somehow don't detect them. Um, uh, a, a, um, an imagination and intelligence of, of a high order um, and a dedication to this cause which is uh, rare among hoaxes a, a persistent hoax going on for over ten years showing remarkably skillful elaboration so that to start with the phenomena are quite simple and straightforward and therefore can easily be accepted as if they are created by whirlwinds. That does seem a plausible explanation for the occasional circle of this kind. And then carefully building up um, so that the thing becomes more and more intriguing and, and peculiar. Um, it's just that a hoax on that scale and of that kind um, seems exceedingly improbable. It's difficult to think who could have done it how they could have maintained the secrecy, what could have motivated them, and what kind of dedication and skills um, could have been involved. So the hoax theory 
if it was just one, the hoax theory would be very plausible. But a phenomenon over such a long time period, now with ones turning up in other parts of the world as well, on increasing level 400 of them last year, um, in different parts of Britain, this requires quite a large effort. So are there documented cases with photographs from other parts of the world? I mean, I keep hearing that they've been observed in Russia and Canada and so on, but I haven't seen any. I haven't yet seen any documented evidence for these, except that um, the people who say they've seen them seem reasonably reliable. So in, in terms of some kind of actual conviction, you would think uh, it's still conceivable that uh, it will be discovered that it's a hoax and then the whole phenomenon would be forgotten. That's not totally ruled out. I think there's very good reasons really kind of uh, to say that it's very improbable, a matter of scale, secrecy, persistence in time, and so on. Yeah. Is it more improbable than any other explanation? Can one think of a more probable explanation than that it's a hoax? It seems well, to me any other explanation will be orders of magnitude more improbable than it, that it's a hoax. Well, I don't, I don't, it depends where you come from. You see, someone who was uh, a skeptic, um, you know, would be forced to that hypothesis, whatever happened. The, the Humean skeptical position, you know, where Hume's argument against miracles is that uh, miracles occur rarely, they're extremely improbable, it's far more probable that these are all either conjuring tricks, deceptions or illusions. Uh, this is a standard rationalist position and I think for anyone who takes a rationalist or skeptical point of view the hoax theory will always be a priori, the best theory, whatever happens, whatever the phenomenon. Uh, for those who think paranormal phenomena are likely, even probable, for people who subscribe to the Fortune Times, for members of the Society for the Psychical Research, and so on, then um, the possibility that some other forms of intelligence may be communicating with us in some way at this crucial juncture in human history has a certain plausibility. Um, but it, the phenomenon, you see, it rather depends on what you believe to start with. The well, way well that's a very interesting part, because it's as if... Um, <coughs> Again, assuming, I mean, I really want to believe that the, the paranormal forces will be revealed with superhuman intelligence and speak to us, like the United of Dolphins could speak to us. So, uh, from that perspective, that means that this intelligence has chosen a way to speak to us, which will be misunderstood in most people. I mean, it's almost, uh, appears to be intentionally disguised as a hoax starting from the simplest forms where a plasma vortex theory could conceivably apply, gradually gradually separating the men from the boys, as it were. Let us find a way of speaking, which is a whisper of intelligence to one group and is absolutely ridiculous to another group. It's, it's, it's a great idea. We'll just speak to it us. isn't communication, it's anti-communication. It's kind of anti-communication. Can I wade into this? Yes. And, um, well, let's see. First of all, in trying to understand any unsolved mystery or unknown phenomenon, it seems to me the Western mind has developed a number of tools that have general application, one of them being what's called Occam's razor, that hypotheses should not be multiplied without necessity, so that we should seek the simplest explanation and force it to fail before we move on to time travelers, space travelers, telluric forces, and so forth and so on. There are a number of things about this that seem to me to argue very, very strongly that it is a hoax. Uh, first of all, uh, and in your description of it, Rupert, there were all the 
if it is shown to be a hoax, we could replay the tape of your description it's of it. It's consistent and, and it's consistent with it being a hoax and with the explanation of it being right under the surface. You speak of how it could only be done uh, by a commando-style operation. It would require an organization with great self-discipline and secrecy. Uh, that uh, oddly enough uh, every explanation is then met with a crop circle which torpedoes that explanation uh, it, uh, the people who are attracted to the phenomenon it occurs within driving distance of their doorstep in an area with a history of unusual phenomena so forth and so on um, it seems to me that the likely explanation is that we're dealing with a, not a hoax so much as an experiment, an experiment in um, deception. In deception, it's a deception. Someone is studying how people react to Disney. the paranormal. One of the most puzzling things about this entire thing is that no one has ever seen one of these things in the act of coming into existence. So we get before and we get after. The hoax theory would be completely shot out of the water by videotape of these cereal grains lying down in a pattern. And I predict that we will never obtain such videotape because I'll bet you to see it happening is to see how it's done and that the absence of this videotape is a strong indication that um, this is a disinformation project. That's the most <laughs> devious argument I've ever heard. Why is it devious? If well, you can't catch it in the fact, act, it means that seeing how it's done will tell you how it's done. Yes, but that's but, very clever of it to always be invisible. Or very necessary for it to keep f from being blowing its own cover. Rupert said, it's discussed by all and everyone in the UK. Uh, that is obviously the intent of whatever is behind it. He said it displays uh, humor. Now humor is one of the most uh, human of all characteristics. Polish jokes don't even make sense outside of Poland, yet this has humor. We're told that it uh, is the product of a designing agency. We're told that blue lights and humming noises are associated with it, as if these facts made it more mysterious. They don't make it more mysterious, they make it less mysterious um, and to my mind the most astonishing fact about all this which seems to pose no problem for the English is that their own Ministry of Defense shows no alarm whatsoever over this phenomenon here are nightly trespasses of law-abiding English property owners, violations of the airspace of the United Kingdom, and the government maintains a blithe aloofness. Uh, and I dare say, I'm sure there are nuclear weapons storage areas uh, within driving distance well, of these areas. I've exhausted chasing UFOs for the past 20 years. Well, so here's my uh, notion of what is going on. Every uh, intelligence agency on Earth that does its work well has within it special units that are devoted to studying the paranormal both as a real possibility and as a potential uh, disinformation tool to be used against their enemies and in spite of the uh, fact that uh, in other discussions Rupert has somewhat disparaged uh, is it MI5? Yes. The world reputation of MI5 is that it is contains some of the subtlest 
thinkers that any intelligence agency on earth has ever brought under it. Fleming, the best expert. Well, Alan Turing, so forth and so on. We could go on and on about this. So I suspect that an experiment is in progress to see how people react to a phenomenon which defies explanation. And every time an explanation is brought forth, the phenomenon is redesigned to destroy and discredit the explanation. It's, it's, a, it's a deep cover study of the semiotics of deception. And uh, yeah. this, does, this seems to me a very good way for an intelligence agency to spend its money. This is the business intelligence agencies are in, is deception. Now, the people who are uh, participating in this on the front lines, the lay liners, the dousers, the UFO the enthusiasts, and the tellurists, are uh, simply dupes. And a population, the easiest population on earth to dupe, any stage magician will tell you that the easiest people to fool are people who believe in magic. They are, have already come over to your side. Now, um, in the United States, a somewhat similar phenomenon occurred somewhat earlier in time, which were um, cattle mutilations. And much was made of this, and, and the same crowd of people manned the front lines and announced that aliens were experimenting with bovine pituitary glands and so forth and so on. And in fact, I believe what was happening was a similar effort on the part of the CIA to start a disinformation backfire uh, to the spreading cult of allegiance to UFOs. Uh, we, there is a method for looking at this kind of phenomenon where you analyze what it's doing in terms of its effect on society, and then you can reason back to uh, its causes. And what you would get deconstructions. <laughs> <laughs> what this phenomenon is doing is um, casting doubt on scientific orthodoxy. The story of the Just gentleman... The yes, the gentleman who called the conference to have his theory sanctioned, who, was in, uh, who had his conference dissolve in chaos when evidence was brought in that was completely outside the purvey of his theory, was simply... He was made a monkey of by um, this agency. So I think that we, I find this all very, very interesting, but I think we should be very cautious of lining up with the people who proclaim that friendly Zenebel Ganubians or people from a far-flung future are communicating uh, because nothing is being communicated and in the absence of the observation of the phenomenon in progress, I think it would be absurd to go outside the uh, 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 conjuring power of reason and just say this is an intelligence operation in progress and uh, inf deception and the mechanics of deception and the sociological response to deception is being very, very carefully studied. I find it fascinating that from August to May, it can't happen. I submit this is when this is the period when the data is analyzed and next year's <laughs> designs are planned and perhaps training is carried out in other parts of the world where the commandos, if it is true that these things are occurring in other parts of the world, then that may be where the practice takes place. I would suspect that it actually isn't going on in other parts of the world, and that it's simply the enthusiasm of the, uh, the ley line people to make this claim. 
the whole thing seems to me uh, d beneath our uh, intelligence. Oh. It's a mass. It's directed toward the mass mind. It's a dialogue between MI5 and the tabloids with the gullible haplessly caught in between and uh, the rest of us able to look down with a small smile at all this sound and fury uh, over nothing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, extremely impossible <laughs> for anyone who's brought up in Britain and knows the kind of official setup there to think that an intelligence agency in Britain could have the imagination that such an imaginative scheme could be sanctioned by whatever committees are in power, that they should have the motivation to discredit science in the eyes of the public, um, or that uh, any official body could carry on for so long in the spirit of mischief more implausible than that outer, the aliens from another dimension are writing incomprehensible glyphs in no. the cornfields of England? No, the, the, main, theories, the, main the, people. the main theory that appeals to um, people in the, uh, on the paranormal front in England is not aliens. Aliens uh, and the UFO thing subsided into the background quite early. You see, when you had circles with symmetrical smaller circles around them, placed in fours or even fives, um, the ufologists said, well, this is obviously the landing marks <laughs> of an alien spacecraft. Um, however, as soon as they'd said that, the next year, ones of this kind appeared directly under power transmission lines, thus refuting the idea that any heavy object could have come down vertically from above and landed there. It would have had to come down, then move sideways, uh, a large heavy object without having any effect on the surrounding crop, and then land, which is surely a devious way for it to happen. So the most obvious flying saucer type theories were refuted by the phenomenon itself. The alien theory is a very rare one among the theories encountered. The, the one that I think is most popular in, uh, among people who take seriously the uh, phenomenon and think that the hoax theory is not the only possible explanation is that there's a, uh, the spirit of the land itself or earth mysteries long embedded in these ancient megalithic monuments are sort of coming back to life again and somehow um, are being reactivated in Britain's hour of need. Or that um, Gaia, the Gaian intelligence or the Gaian mind itself is involved in some um, ongoing dialogue or communication which um, principally has the effect year by year of attracting more and more attention. And the message year by year seems to be watch this space. Well, I, I would make a series of predictions about this phenomenon. The strongest prediction that I would make is it will simply be eventually exposed as exactly what I said it was, a government disinformation study, uh, because if the British government is as bungling as you say it is, then eventually they will drop the ball. That would be my first prediction, and the whole thing will be exposed as a study of disinformation and deception. Especially if the, now with the budget problems. If that doesn't happen, then I would make the following two predictions. We will never see film or videotape of one of these things in the act of happening, and the phenomenon will stop very suddenly of its own accord because the project will end. Uh, one point I didn't get to make in my uh, <laughs> attack is you mentioned that it, it is deterred by rainy weather. I submit to you this is simply because in rainy weather uh, it's harder to cover your yeah, tracks. To cover your tracks. You're going to leave footprints helicopter skid marks or whatever it is, that rainy weather makes it more difficult to carry out the deception. So I think we will never see videotape or film of this and that it will e either go away very suddenly when the project is completed or 
some at night, a number of these ley liners will stumble on MI5's uh, group hard at work uh, making a crop circle. Painted green and yellow stripes. Yes, and anything else, I, I mean, I'm willing to be convinced, and I would say I'll abandon my position if I see film of it in progress. That's what we need. Is it's intolerable to claim that this is going on on such a large scale and no one can come. It must take many minutes to make one of these things, even if you were a commando team. And unless we're asked to believe it happens instantly, it seems that the strangest thing about it is that we never catch it in the act. And also, I do find the silence of the British government absolutely beyond understanding unless they are at the highest levels fully informed as the to American what's going government on. had a UFO project but it was top secret so they might be interested in a way that we don't know about uh, Terence I don't like this idea of um, making a large bet on this single theory I, I agree that um, from our perspective the hoax theories have not been uh, diminished in probability enough, and that Occam's razor does seem to apply. And among hoax theories, I would say your military version is uh, maybe, let us just suppose it's the most likely hoax theory. It still seems to me that uh, you could be the dupe, because... Uh, we have these very interesting precedents, if they be precedents, uh, the Vedas, the Bible, the sacred books, they are written in several levels. In Vedas, they have four levels in, uh, of communication. The Bible has two clear le levels that are constantly uh, interpreted and uh, hermeneutics and put before us. There is a level for ordinary stupid people, and there is another level for... Um, elite uh, spiritual devotees. So here we have a phenomenon where if a, a Gaia is speaking to us, I mean, in case it's not a hoax, in case it's not a hoax, then what is it? It does seem to be disguised as a hoax, that's true. But there would be a reason for that, you see, and all people who believe it's a hoax, when as a matter of fact it's a divine communication, those people are dupes. As in the case of the Bible, there are a lot of people who think it's just history and so on. But well, but even the people who the people who don't believe it's a hoax uh, are of many minds about what it is. It doesn't seem to be clearly communicating anything to anybody. Well, well the that, interpretation of the Bible is also not so clear. Well, communicate. This is anti-communication. In other words, what in the world is the point of opening a channel? and then sending noise through the channel. Well, as you were saying about Cain and Abel, exactly who did they make with to produce the legions that followed? Is this noise? Is this a story? Well, I, I don't feel the force of calling on the Vedas or the Bible at all. The very fact that you have to reach back that far shows the desperate effort to save the phenomenon. Uh, it seems to me that this is quite a tight little explanation, uh, and I'm sure that the British government doesn't dismiss the safety of its thermonuclear weapons by appealing to the double level of the Vedas. I think that we should bet on the red, and we should bet on the black. Probably you're right. Probably it's a hoax. In case it's a hoax, probably it's the military. All right. But just as the, the fanatics of this phenomenon can't reduce the hoax theory to zero, neither can we reduce the non-hoax theory to zero. Therefore, we have to keep our eyes open in case it begins to actually say some understandable intelligence to us. We can't dismiss it completely. We have to keep watching the photographs. It doesn't even it. have to say something intelligent to us. It just has to happen while we're looking at it. That would, but then it would bring every newspaper on earth it would report it. 
Well, why not? Is it trying to communicate? Yeah, what would it lose by being seen in the act of happening? Yeah, we see that naive. it happens. If, 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 if I produced a videotape and said, look, here's a thing taken by the Centre for Crop Circle Studies team in the field. Here's the video. Here you can see the, the, stalk, the stalks being flattened. If you didn't say it, certainly members of PSYCHARP and sceptical organizations would... This videotape is a hoax. Is a hoax. Yeah. But the people who are out there... No, but the they would be on the defensive. Right now, it's the leyliners who are on the defensive. No, they're not on the defensive. That's either. why they watch for it. That's why they're so keen to yeah, watch. They, they know play. that seeing it happen is a key event in the evolution well, of the phenomenon. Well, everybody agrees that it would be interesting to be able to record one happening. It would be the crux of the map. Well, that's why people are out there investigating it, you see. But the, anyone who's out there investigating it, well, uh, whatever they find, has their testimony doubted, unless they happen to find people actually f photographs of clear cut evidence of military people flattening it. Now... That, you see, what the trouble is nothing will prove it either way. That's my point. If you have a, a picture of the military involved in a hoax or non-military or anybody else, then people, some people will say that proves they're all hoaxes. Others will say, well, we've always known that some of them are hoaxes and this is just one of the hoaxes, but the others aren't. That's right. This happened with the cattle mutilations. No matter how many times they found military scalpels at the site and saw helicopters departing from the site, the hardcore continued to claim that there was a residuum of these phenomena that were, in fact, aliens connecting pineal well, glands. There's very little difference between a low-speed helicopter and a UFO. Well, except where they come from. <laughs> <laughs> but you well, can't tell the thing is, you see, I don't see why you have such a need to close the issue in advance. You see, I think the reasonable position is to keep an open mind. The hoax theory is one theory. It has a certain plausibility. It's the one that involves the least... Uh, it involves a very considerable stretching of one's uh, mind and cred credulity about the powers of the British government or organisations in Britain to do something like this. Uh, it involves the least offence to ordinary scientific rationalism. Um, it involves the same kind of Occam's razor principle by which uh, many would dismiss claims, for example, of elf sightings under the influence of hallucinogens. Well, but this uh, is a repeatable phenomenon. If you don't think elves can be observed under DMT, smoke DMT and see. This doesn't have that kind of straightforward... Uh, this has that weird, slippery... You know, for the believer, it's uh, obvious. For the non-believer, it's nonsense well, kind of thing. Well, I think the DMT and elf sighting is a, a parallel. It, since it, in some areas, uh, you side with the rationalists and others with the non-rationalists. The elf sightings under the influence of DMT are not seen by all who take DMT according to the only scientific study of the subject. But some do. It's seen by two people out of twelve. The well, same but what's, cl what's claimed? Uh, all the tapes. On what's the claimed here is a massive violation of physics, uh, a, a complete yes. breakdown of natural law over yes. hundreds of square yes. meters. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, on very little evidence, on a on some trampled down crops. Well, talk about a mountain out of a molehill. And I submit to you, you keep avoiding directly addressing this. Why isn't the British government concerned about the violation of its sovereignty in airspace? I mean, that somebody... Has been raised. Well, in why not? Are, because in Britain, this, this kind of defense paranoia thing that it is not that's races. that's a very odd culture bound it's like i see you as a painted cannibal when you <laughs> explain to me <laughs> that britain is different we don't really care about the security of our thermonuclear weapons and air bases that's an odd cultural phenomenon that you americans <laughs> seem to have developed we're quite 
casual about securing our uh, thermal nuclear weapon depots. Are you well, then, serious? Well, then, th 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 there are more American thermal nuclear weapons in Britain than there are British ones. Well, then the CIA, uh, then good old American paranoia must be uh, quite agitated by this kind of thing. Well, possibly. As soon as UFOs were reported in the United States, the first thing that happened was they said, what is the president's position on this? And the president said, we're immediately appointing a blue ribbon committee to look into this, and it will report to me and the Congress, and I assure the people of the United States, blah, 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 okay, blah. Well, let's hear what they say in this case. Why don't you write to your representative? and say that you're alarmed that these crop circle phenomena are happening in Britain uh, within 20 or miles or so. And apparently there's US been one or two in the United States. Yes. Well, this gets very shaky. But it's for sure they're happening in Britain. So, And for sure there are lots of American nuclear weapons there, far more than there are British nuclear weapons. So you could have the matter raised in Congress, and we could get a statement from the President of the United States uh, and him to appoint a commission on the subject straight away. Well, I'm sure what he would Good say was, really on matters of the safety of thermonuclear weapons, we make no statements. However, we are in contact with the British government on this matter. Stay tuned. That's what they would say. Well, then and at then least they they be from, further. then, then uh, you could ask a question a few months later and say, you know, what have you found out? If nothing, why not? What are we paying these intelligence services for? And um, it may then, if it's forced to a political crisis in America with freedom of information and all the rest of it, mm -hmm. force them to compel the British secret services to reveal that the whole thing is a military hoax. The thing is that if but you're don't right, you find it odd possible. that it's never been raised in England? No, because it's the kind of... The, the this is not a soul in England who would think like that. He, no, the, the flattening of... You're assuming all along that it's a violation of airspace. The, the normal assumption that most people would have is that um, Hoaxers arrive by car. Well, what well, are the attitudes of the farmers car. whose crops are ruined by this? Well, they vary in attitude. Some well, of them are puzzled and find the whole thing very mysterious. And some of them set up a sign and make a pound a person to off get of into it. it. But I should think some would uh, be quite... Uh, some people are very proprietary. And to get up the some morning and see your them. wheat crop ruined and a bunch of tellurists well, we wandering know. around taking pictures. The police are doing what they can. They're protecting their rear. They well, fly around in helicopters trying to prevent occurrences. If they see anybody rolling around in a crop circle, they attack them immediately. But As to pretend that it stops at the constabulary level, it, I just... Well, that's a good level for uh, trespassing on farmers' property. I, I think you. I think you have a. I just. I just don't get it. It's obvious that well, the British government is fully informed of what's I going on and is not alarmed. And the only reason they're not alarmed is because there's nothing to be alarmed about. And the reason there's nothing to be alarmed about is because MI5 is doing it. It's so obvious <laughs> that to think anything else is to... You might as well line up with Elvis at the 7-Eleven. Well, let's and, say it's a good uh, theory. All right, it's a good theory, and then we can discuss it. We'll just put it on the list. Under, under the hypothesis that this is actually what's happening. All right, now, yeah, they're going to a fantastic expense over a period of 10 years, and they've done over a 1,000 crop circles so far at considerable expense for Well, each. these and agencies are well-funded. Of, co of course, it could be the French intelligence intelligence services or the American or the Russian intelligence services making a statement proving to MI5 that as a matter of fact that there's nothing they can do to apprehend them. But uh, supposing it's the, uh, as you say, the simplest theory, Occam's razor, the English military are doing this, making this expense as what? As an experiment in disinformation. Now let's see what we can learn about disinformation from this. They get the results in the newspaper. They're watching us. They're reading the Journal of Seriology and so on. We can also read the Journal of Seriology. Let us be scientists. We'll do some grassroots science here and we'll 
study the process of disinformation. Well, what have we learned? Well, we actually aren't learning very much, you see, because we know that some people like uh, prefer to believe in the paranormal theories. Other people, like you, prefer to believe in the hoax theory. What actually does Some that tell us? Some people, like Meaden, prefer a kind of scientific theory based yes. on... There's, 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 there's actually three categories of theory, and let's say we could survey the English populace by reading letters to the editor in the various newspapers, and we find out there's 30% for this, 35% for that, 25% for this. Is this research? Is this worth the expense? Well, we don't know where it's going. We're halfway through this. We don't know what MI5 actually has in mind. It may be simply that they are studying... Maybe they the, overthrow the monarchy. We don't know what they have in mind. That's a good point. When Jacques Vallée, in his book, The Messengers of Deception, he felt that there were forces at the highest levels of governments that actually were interested in destroying the credibility of scientific establishments. Well, but then here we have a and program. that's what this thing does. That's well, its yeah, social the consequence. can cut science funding yet further. Mm -hmm. Well, who knows why? I well, mean, yeah. I don't think our inability to second-guess MI5's reasons for doing this means that they don't have reasons for doing it. I mean, the deep cover no, study yeah, yeah, of are. disinformation is not our field. Nor are we experts on propaganda, uh, symbol manipulation, mass brainwashing, uh, so forth and so on. This is not but our your field. Is correct. It's going to be revealed as a hoax eventually. Or it will disappear. Happen. All the people who maintain it wasn't a hoax, they'll be discredited. So, on, uh, unlike the now that's an interesting point. it is the Earth mystery and the UFO and Taylor Force people who are going to be discredited, not the scientists. Thus, it's not the military, it's the British science establishment, led by John Maddox. It is from nature. <laughs> ah, well, now think about the consequences of that for a moment. If this blows up and we flip on the BBC and see that, uh, lo and behold, uh, John Michel led his forces over a hill and surprised uh, MI5 in the act, then that is like a body blow to a whole bunch of paranormal belief systems that have otherwise been flourishing furiously it's in the England. It's the postmodern equivalent of war. It's the collapse of the Communist Party on an occult level in England. Yes. No, those people would forfeit credibility for the rest of the millennium. Yes, that would put them all out of business. This war on this ideological level. Now we understand yeah. what it is. It's a trap. Yeah, it's a trap for it's a trap for gullible occultists, paranormalists, and soft-headed types of all sorts, and they're all going to be led into the trap, announce the imminent approach of the Zenebel Ganubiites or the reemergence of the forces that built New Grange and all this, and then the government will say, the government may simply announce, yes. We did it. We here's how we did it. We'll show you how we did it. If any of those idiots We're going to show you how them. the trick was done. And now, why don't we get back to the business of being a rational and mature civilization? Like the Americans. And all you Merlinites, Telluricists, ley liners, Ouija boarders, channelers, and what have you should seek honest work. Look at what fools you have made of yourself. Now, the incomplete military theory has become the complete military theory. The I military, like it. I think we've got it, gentlemen. The scientific alliance complex theory. Yes. Well, I think... Pretty that, good, um, huh? I think that uh, this is yet another version of the conspiracy theory. Well, let's not get um, caught in this trap. Um, however, I mean, leaving aside the fact that uh, I very much doubt if Tellurisus, Earth Mysteries, Lay Hunters, Malinites and the rest of us in Britain constitute a significant threat to the social order that would be taken sufficiently seriously for anyone to mount a scheme of this kind. Leaving aside that objection, my approach is 
in fact empirical. I have a plan. The plan is to move beyond the stage of armchair speculation to actual empirical research. And the empirical research that I'm proposing, which I shall propose uh, to the Centre for Crop Cycle Studies when I get back, is this. Next year, since the hoax theory is one of the theories that we have to take seriously and consider, next year the Centre for Crop Circle Studies sponsors a competition for the best hoax crop circles. We have a farmer on the uh, committee um, who has offered his land for experimentation on the subject. The people would be able to rent fields from him or other farmers to practice. There would be a small charge for that. The amount of damage in making one of these would be something like £100 worth of corn with the damage. So for fees commensurate with the amount of damage, they could rent fields from farmers, him or other ones, uh, to practice in. Then there'd be the final competition. There'd be a particular night. Each group that entered for this would be assigned a particular field. There'd be certain standard observation techniques applied to the field. They'd get marks for minimum uh, uh, detectability, detectability mm-hmm. through infrared binoculars or other means. Um, and in the morning, the finished results would be seen and judges would go in who'd uh, examine them using the criteria used in the case of normal crop circles for trying to decide whether it's a hoax or not. Um, an independent panel would judge which was the most ingenious design, the most surprising, that had got the most marks for being done undetected, that um, uh, that was the most um, convincing. convincing. This uh, this would be an international competition. There would be a prize of £10,000, let's say, for the best crop circle, which would be put up by the Guardian newspaper or the Daily Express, uh, which would then have exclusive rights uh, uh, on the first publicity of the results, and then could be sold on to other... There would be a tremendous media interest in this. Um, um, And this competition would then force the evolution of the phenomenon. It would, first of all, show us what competent and well-motivated groups of hoaxers were capable of, which there's been no demonstration of so far. Secondly, how long it took, how many people it took, what kind of kind of apparatus they'd need, um, you know, how you do it at night to, to try and escape detection. Um, it would show the kind of imagination and schemes and plans and designs and how you execute an under cover of darkness, fairly complex designs in the field, coordinating different people. Um, and uh, it would force the evolution of the phenomenon because if the military or some other group of conspirators or hoaxers are in fact responsible for for the phenomenon this would then raise the standards against which they had to work and whether it's a natural phenomenon, a paranormal intelligence uh, or a military or other kind of hoax uh, the following year um, we would accelerate the evolution of the entire phenomenon So this is my proposal um, as a positive step forward to testing the hoax theory, to gaining positive evidence um, and uh, providing further amusement for the British public. Well, I I want to go back to something you said. You said you didn't think that uh, uh, this phenomenon was threatening uh, or that the telluricists and so forth were threatening the social order. But again, this book by Valet, The Messengers of Deception, is very interesting. Um, In the United States, over the past 20 years or so, up until about uh, 1980, every poll that was done, every successive poll, showed that more and more people believed in the reality of UFOs and it went from 15% to like 70% people be- whatever real means people would say yes I believe UFOs are real and then um, the cattle mutilation phenomenon came along and instead of the friendly space brothers bringing peace to all mankind you get these forces which move in the night with scalpels removing the organs of animals and this whole creepy aspect of it was brought in lo and behold belief in UFOs interest in UFOs all of this stuff began to fall now in fact we there is going on and we are involved 
in an effort to subvert the social order. Your theory, my belief in the importance of psychedelic drugs, uh, our no. general commitment to the idea that Save science, our general commitment to the Just idea the that science is inadequate to experience, to describing reality, and all of these, what it is, Rupert, is it's a war it's a between, war. um, Pagan thought, war. it's an ideological war and between pagan German. thought and straight people, the Church of England, if you want to call it that. And they are, this is an incredibly clever way of dealing a tremendous setback to They're the forces of pagan thought. Still. If this thing is exposed as a hoax, paganism, earth energy, to lure Derailed. it to all of this will be discredited in England for years to come. It will be a tremendous body blow to the anti-Christian forces in England. And if you, and uh, tracking information and shifts in social attitudes toward uh, orthodox morality and so forth and so on, may have in fact triggered a decision on the part of the British government Let's where they go that. to MI5 and say, look, we're losing hold of society. People believe in the Sheldrake theory and they believe in the Telluric forces and the return of the elf armies and the rise of the fairy legions and all this stuff. Can't you figure out some way to restore the power of orthodoxy? And I said, aha, we'll build an enormous trap for these people. We'll lure them so far out onto a branch and then we're going to cut it off. <laughs> and that's what's happening. I think that this is the prediction that should be forwarded to the seriologist. You people are all going to be made fools of. Your gullibility has set you up to betray the real pagan renaissance. No, the way to avoid absolutely this. not. Because the, first of all, the Center for Crop Circle Studies is not committed to like the Society for Psychical Research, is not committed to say these are done by Martians or anything. No, it's but this guy, John Michel, is a pagan through and through. He's the, he's well, the he's head of the pagan party in England. Yes, but he's, he's the editor of the Seriologist. That's another one. And ruining it. him would be a tremendous blow to paganism. Well, It's like what would happen to the Third Reich if you blew up Hitler is what will happen to paganism in England well, if you get rid of... if anyone discovers it's a hoax, it's going to be the center for crop circle studies itself. Because this is the group that's actually mounting field watching. investigations. No, I suspect no, the government they, is going to announce it and say, we did it video. and show it Take and here's how we like. did it and we'll show it in front of you and send the media of the world to observe and we'll make you crop circles from here to Canterbury and back again. Well, let us say that that doesn't happen. What would convince you you were wrong? A film of it happening. Film of it happening. That wouldn't convince you. Yes, it I would. I'm not. I'm not as hard as hard. you think. But I just see that what's happening. It's. It's not solid enough. There's too much funny business. It doesn't feel right. It feels like a bunch of well-meaning, gullible people are being coaxed deeper and deeper into delusion, and they're being set up for an enormous fall and their political agenda well, will then be now you always ask why would they do it the other night that was your challenge to me why would the British government do it? And here's, here's why. why to set back paganism to preserve orthodoxy to the save England can, can from the flakes can protect themselves from this trap by simply saying and r repeating on a monthly basis in the seriologist that yes we think it may be a hoax no, they should say yeah, the most the likely explanation is a hoax. And we're out there searching to discover it. That's well, that's what, the, the point is the Center for Crop Circle Studies has said exactly that. It does say that, that it may be a hoax. There well, but I've things. read the seriologist and, and it's well, but no means what you would call an organ of rationalism, no. of rational discourse. It's a clearinghouse for every screwball theory ever to come down the pike. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> the trap right. theory is one of them. Yes, the trap theory, this is just another theory. They print it in the seriologist. If you submit this, they'll print it. They print any theory. 
They regard the theories as interesting as the phenomenon itself. Well, I, I haven't, one I've I've been puzzled. I've been under pressure of this dialogue. I've perfected this theory. I confess, up until this week, I was a fence sitter, and I desperately, like you, I assume, and you, wanted to believe that the you that from the far future, from beneath the from somewhere that would rock our world view, uh, 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 someone was reaching out. But you it's want a whole village to see the UFO. I don't come think down. so. I I would not get near it now. I've seen through it. This does it for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still think that the um, best way forward is this experimental approach to the hoax theory that I'm proposing. I think well, that's very good. good. The best thing that can be done in the circumstances, it doesn't commit one one way or the other. It does shed further information on just how hoax is. It, it, it escapes the trap. You see, it gives credibility to the gullible. Well, you should lead them proposal. out of the trap well, Rupert, this is before it's too late. This is what I intend to try and get the Center for Crop Circle set Studies to mount next year. Um, this, I think, would uh, enable them to maintain a position. My position, and that's the position of others in this organization, is that here's an amazing phenomenon, whatever they call it, there's many theories, whatever the cause, it needs to be investigated. Now, you see, the position of people who are against this is to say, here's an amazing thing that appears in the papers. We shouldn't investigate it. We should pay no attention. We should leave it just to the journalists. We shouldn't attempt to find out how it's happening. We shouldn't wait at night to try it with video cameras to see how it happens. That seems to me a very peculiar position. It seems to me the position of the investigators of this phenomenon is far more scientific and rational than the, than the position of those who say, we already know the answer. There's no point whatever in attempting to see what's happening or paying any attention just leave it to the media so I think that this is the only rational position to adopt namely to treat it as a natural historical phenomenon or at least a phenomenon, let's just say a phenomenon to investigate it empirically I think this is Baconian science. Yes, well, Baconian yes, well science. this is what I called for, Occam's razor. The hypotheses should not be multiplied unless well, there's a necessity to do you, so. There's hundreds of hypotheses, of which yours is one. You've just multiplied the hypotheses this evening. Well, but I handled, <laughs> all, of, I handled all of the facts in three-dimensional space, in political space, in rational space, and managed to tie it up all very neatly without violating physics or calling on other dimensions or hypothesizing strange forms of energy or any of the well, violations of ordinary... Forms of conspiracy. It's not a strange form of conspiracy. It's orthodoxy fighting back with the weapons at its disposal. How, what's new about that? It gives them a great credit of intelligence, which may not be justified. Yes, I found the most weakest I think part of that. I've seen that. no evidence either that orthodoxy is as coherent as you assume, or that it's as intelligent as you assume, or that it has the kind of humor, imagination, and flexibility that you assume. Most orthodoxies run by committees. This is a phenomenon that couldn't be run by a committee. In my well, but you are not. You haven't looked into brainwashing, uh, disinformation programs, manipulation of mass perception of reality, and these are the specialties of governments and intelligence agencies. Not your specialty. Their specialty. Well, let's say that this is an excellent theory, and it's not happening. It, it's not appropriate, really, to give uh, probability to it at this time. I think uh, Rupert's plan for a research project is very exciting, and the idea of publishing the trap theory in the seriologist, I think, is an excellent plan. It wouldn't take long to write this up as a letter to John Michel. Um, a possible supplement to the uh, research program for grassroots science would be to do some survey research of the British population before and after the competition and see, as a matter of fact, what effect um, the competition has on the credibility or gullibility of the uh, well, even ahead of that, it's probably already been looked at the rate at which uh, pagan ideas are spreading in England. 
uh, what percentage of the population ten so years ago? Fairies. Not fairies. That's a general folk belief in England. Not really a fair test. But the abandonment of Orthodox Christianity for new the New Age for new uh, metaphysical positions, oh, uh, channeling, so forth and so on. It is on the rise, is it We're not? I mean, isn't Glastonbury the, the center of all this, and yes. it's spreading yes. and spreading? And yes. well, if you're if you're a straight person in England, you must view this with considerable alarm. I mean, I don't think that straight people in England view that with a great deal of alarm. I, I think they're more alarmed by cocaine, you know, crime in the inner cities and that kind of thing. I don't think that New Age phenomena are particularly alarming in Britain. There's a long tradition in, in Britain of interest in these kinds of things. Prince Charles is a, a, an establishment representative of this particular point of view. Well, in this country, it's quite the other case. Uh, well, religious think. fundamentalists have for years been denouncing the New Age as uh, uh, Satan's legions well, uh, expanding legions, their base. Uh, the popularity of uh, goddess workshops at the Omega Foundation and here at Essendon is on the increase, and I don't think that's created a great wave of paranoia in government or the military. That would be far-fetched in the United States. And and well, but in in England is a more pagan country. Well, it's yeah. more delicately balanced than the United States in these matters. There's much opposition. It is more agreeable to people there. And also, the there's not landed. a sharp polarization. And if you take the Church of England, I mean, after all, I'm There's not a sharp polarization between Christians and paganism. This is no. new. Well, oh, I speak as one myself. I mean, I'm I'm a communicating Anglican, a loyal member of my parish congregation. Um, and well, so when they start burning pagans at the stake, where will you stand? I shall. I and my position is uh, is one of Christian animism. Um, I believe that the true. Uh, base of Christianity is to be rooted in the land. I think that the uh, the uh, actual position of many Anglicans in Britain is uh, to appreciate the sanctity of the sacred places like the cathedrals, the churches and so on. The revival of Marian uh, religion is sort of fairly well established. Pilgrimage is on the increase. Um, the idea that sacred places have ancient roots in the land and that Christian cathedrals and churches are built on ancient pagan sacred sites appeals to many Anglicans. They don't dismiss this. I try these ideas out on vicars and members of congregations. Most of them really like them. I've never encountered any opposition to this approach in my um, conversations quite widely. Well, the reason those churches were built on those p pagan sites was not a pre an appreciation of telluric energy. It was to appropriate those sites and utterly obliterate uh, the pagan uh, uh, temples that were there. It was, in well, fact, oh. a program well, of ideological genocide no, that was carried out. Well, you can look at it that way, but that's the way you can look at it too. I'm yet. sure that's how the pagans looked at it. I think that the way that the... Um, when in the Celtic Church in um, Britain, the pagans willingly accepted Christianity, as they did in many cases in Ireland and in Iona and places, they did so partly because they assimilated it to their world view. And they were able to assimilate it by including Christian shrines in, in their sacred sites. So you could say that um, what's happened in, in that you could look at it from both points of view. One, an incorporation of Christianity into a pagan system. And the other way, the incorporation of a pagan system into Christianity. But both are true. And both these attitudes coexist. And it's by no means the simple idea of total obliteration by conquering it. The, the power of this well, time. I oh, think yeah. if you had been there, I mean, uh, I don't know that much about the coming of Christianity to the British Isles, but where I do know something about it, it was always a bloody nightmare, such as in Mexico or South America. I this just did this cheerful like story of how these happy pagans. I think we're uh, rambling too much here. And uh, maybe we could bring it back to 
corn circles or in the trap theory we could say uh, the church is more on the pagan side actually than on the side of uh, science and the military and certainly the I've, I've never you know I go to church every Sunday I've heard lots of sermons I read things about religious columns and newspapers and that kind of thing I've never heard any denunciation of crop circles from any Christi credible Christian. No, well, but denunciations of paganism. I've heard almost none of those. This you, the entire it. history of Western civilization Why is a frantic effort to stamp out paganism. Is it's it? taken them 2,000 years and they're still at it, still inveighing against witchcraft, sorcery, scrying, all of these things. I mean, this cheerful story you tell about this land of happy men is nonsense. We're talking <laughs> about the fate of Western civilization. And if you don't think people will defend their vision of it with disinformation programs, propaganda, lying, trickery, and manipulation, and if that doesn't work, canon, then you just haven't read uh, Western history. I don't think the church is involved in the conspiracy of the reason. I think orthodoxy is fast, defending itself orthodoxy, against no, unorthodox forces. It doesn't have to do with church. Yes, I mean, two percent of the population. Time to fight back, I dare say. Well, it's very, very unlikely that, that orthodoxy in Britain is any longer identified with the official Christian point of view. Secondly, I don't think orthodoxy in Britain, as represented by the Conservative government, has any axe to grind for scientific orthodoxy. Um, they've done more to set back the cause of science in Britain than any government in history. They've cut funding, they've demoralised scientific institutions. Yeah. The Thatcher government um, has you know, closed down lab after lab. The, the scientific community in Britain, almost to a man, is anti-government to, to the depth of their being, because never before has the scientific community been so demoralized and humiliated. Well then ready to lash out by any means necessary. Time for wild schemes. If they're that demoralized, if they're that, if their backs are that much yeah, to the so. wall, then it seems the absolute precondition for them to undertake no an operation like this. conspiracy between the church and the military I, I'm not claiming or that. Or between or the scientific I'm community not claiming and that. I'm claiming that orthodoxy is defending itself against magic. It's a war between reason and magic. And you can talk well, about whether the Thatcherites are on one side or the other or where does the Church of England come down. It's a desperate struggle between uh, <laughs> rational orthodoxy and magic. And well, magic is being led into a trap. These assertions should probably be posed as questions for grassroots social science research. Uh, questionnaires a clergyman could be asked you know, for their attitudes and clever ways about different things. Well, I think you need to ask the whole population of England and see to what degree is loyalty being transferred from reason to the occult and what does reason think about that that's and what does the occult think about well, I that think that's an important question that could be approached by survey sample research and uh, that would sort of give us an idea how we're doing and I'm not sure if there has been any such survey in Britain or in the United States on these questions and we constantly speculate them about them in all our talks and there's been no objective measures this is a very good grassroots project, simple to do. Yes. So why don't we let it lie at that? Yes. All right. Good. <clears throat>